So let me show you how to use this uh, worksheet we have here for the example. Here we have the matrix and we have a column in which we're going to keep track of how the matrix has been updated. We have a column where we're going to indicate the pivot matrix that needs to be applied. And we have a column where we indicate the Gauss transform that we're going to use. And what we have over here is an integer array in which we're going to keep track the information about the pivoting, the row swapping that is going to occur as we march through this example. Now, notice that a PDF with this worksheet uh, is available in this unit, and I suggest that you print out a couple of copies of this. Okay, so we start with this matrix right here, and the first thing you ask yourself is, do we need to pivot in order to make sure that this entry on the diagonal, this first entry right there, is not a zero. And in this particular case, the answer is no, it's already not a zero, so therefore we can leave it alone. So the permutation matrix that we then want to use is simply the, the identity. The identity is a special case of the permutation matrix. And whenever I don't write a number down, it means that it's zero. Now, to capture the fact that this current row did not have to be swapped with any other row. In this vector over here, this is a small p, lowercase p, what we want to indicate is that the current zeroth row, which is the row with which we're working, has to be swapped with the row with index zero relative to that. And that's why we put a zero there. Now notice that this pivot matrix, we don't actually need to store at all because all we need to know is with, with what row we need to swap. So then we go on and we say, okay, the matrix after pivoting is then simply that matrix because ne nothing changed. So we fill that out over here and notice the order in which we fill things out. Okay. Next, we need to compute a Gauss transform such that we zero these entries right here. How do we do that? Well, we take these entries as a vector and we divide them by the number on the diagonal. So we take the vector 4, 6, divide by 2, we get the vector 2, 3. Those are our multipliers. And then all we need to do is take the negative of the multipliers and when we now multiply this Gauss transform times the matrix, what we know is that this introduces zeros right here. We know that the first row is left alone. And what else do we know? Well, we know that this 8 has to be updated by doing minus 2 times 4 and adding that to 8. Minus 2 times 4 is minus 8. Add that to 8. We end up with a 0 there. Minus 3 times 4 is minus 12. Minus 4 is minus 16. Minus 2 times minus 2 is 4. Add that to 6 is 10. Minus 3 times minus 2 is 6. Add that to 2. You get 8. Okay. And notice that the pivot vector carried through from here to here, and then there was a zero sitting right there. So now we look at this and we say, how do we need to pivot so that this zero right here is no longer a zero? And notice that the second row needs to be swapped with the third row. So that is the pivot matrix that looks like this. And if you want, you can put a one here and put zeros everywhere else. And that is the permutation that represents how the rows need to be rearranged. Now, notice that we call at this point this row 0 because that's the current row. 
and this row 1. So this is row 0 and row 1. And what we're saying is that row 0 must be swapped with row 1, and therefore we put a 1 in this vector of integers that keeps track of how we need to swap rows. At that point, we know that this matrix becomes min uh, 2, 4, minus 3. We now swap the last row with the second to last row, and therefore we get 0, minus 16, and 8. And at the bottom, we get 0, 0, 10. And we carry down the vector that tells us how to pivot. Then we ask ourselves, what should the Gauss transform be to place a 0 right here? And that Gauss transform has to be 0 divided by minus 16, which is just minus 0. And then our final upper triangular matrix becomes this right here. And then we want to keep this vector that tells us how we should have pivoted. Now, we probably should have... We probably should have overwritten these zeros that we introduced with the multipliers that we computed along the way, here, here, and here. Had you done that, it would have been very important to notice that we not only swapped these two rows, but we also swapped the multipliers that would have been stored there. And that's very important uh, if in the end we want to be able to read off what the LU factorization of the permuted matrix is.